guys, welcome back to another video. Today is another Weird Wisconsin, and I am focusing on the Fister Hotel. Now, it is spelled P-F-I-S-T-E-R, but it is pronounced Fister. I, you know, did Google it to see if it was Feister or Feaster, but no, it's Fister. So there's that. We're not here to talk about the uh, funny name of this hotel. We're here to talk about the history of it and its spookiness. Woo! The Fister Hotel was the product of Guido Fister. Now, this was not the first um, vent venture that he had um, accomplished in his life. Uh, he was well known for a tannery business in Milwaukee known as Guido Fister Tanning Co., which was later renamed Fister and Vogel Leather Co. It was one of the largest distributors of leather in the Midwest. Quickly becoming successful in his business and gaining the bucks, he wanted to um, expand his um, interests and wanted to create a hotel, a place where people from around the country could come and stay and have a good time. With help from his son Charles, the two got this dream up and running. They created a multi-story building that is still around today and is gorgeous. Now, of course, they didn't just do this on their own. They had an architect help them, a well-known architect known as Henry C. Koch. Henry proceeded to design a stunning Romanesque revival facade that inspired all who saw it. The original 200 rooms had high ceilings and were decorated with 19th century decor. His son Charles was an avid art collector and a lot of the pieces he has collected are in the hotel. And there are some beautiful artwork in the hotel painted on some of the ceilings and it's just... Wow. <laughs> Guido died one year before construction began on the hotel, but his son Charles, instead of throwing in the towel, saw that his father's dream became a reality. They wanted to make this a luxury spot that people around the United States, maybe the world, would want to come visit Milwaukee. They spent about 1.5 or over a million dollars, which in today's money would be $34,703,555. Holy shit. The building boasted many groundbreaking features, including fireproofing, at one point being known as the only fireproof hotel in Milwaukee, which during this time, that wasn't a common practice, so that's probably quite accurate. Uh, it had electricity and it had thermostats in every single room. For 1893, this place was, I was gonna say fire, but it won't light on fire, it's fireproofed. <laughs> but uh, this place was fancy. In addition to its then modern amenities, the hotel contained a formal dining room, a gentleman's lounge, and two billiard rooms, one for women and one for men. When construction concluded in 1893, the Fister Hotel was one of the most gorgeous buildings in Milwaukee. Nevertheless, the hotel struggled initially, losing hundreds of dollars a day. However, it started to gain popularity with people who would want to vacation. Um, it's a very beautiful hotel with lots of space and areas to um, mingle with others. And uh, it became a like avid vacation spot for people. Many patrons called it the Grand Hotel of the West, which, you know, there's no great hotels past this one, I guess, because there's a lot of West to go. Affluent customers began to uh, make reservations at the hotel. One of the um, first events held there was a massive convention for the Wisconsin Republican Party, which really put the hotel on the map. They're like, ooh, and that's when people started going, I'm gonna stay here. <laughs> Even some of the most powerful people in the nation stayed at this hotel, starting with President McKinley, who stayed there in 1897. Charles Pfister eventually began operating the hotel into the 20th century. Once his father passed, it was kind of his role to take on the hotel. Even through prohibition, the hotel was doing its best to stay afloat, and because alcohol was a big no-no, Charles actually created his own drink called Indian Punch, which was very popular at the hotel, so much so that he thought of bottling it. Which, I don't know what Indian Punch was. I tried to Google it to see, like, what like what it was. Like, what he mixed together. I, I don't know, but it could be good. In 1927, Charles suffered a debilitating stroke and I had to step away from the hotel. And he gave it to his friend and co-worker who took on the reins of uh, managing it. 
I'm not sure what really happened in between here, but in 1962, the Pfister Hotel was bought by Ben Marcus, who wanted to revitalize the hotel and bring it back to its former glory. The hotel was expanded tremendously. There was a tower added on. It's 23 stories and it added 176 rooms onto the hotel, but it blends so seamlessly with the original hotel that you can't really tell that it was an add-on. An ornate bar called the Crown Room was the crown jewel of the new tower. It became quite popular as a nightclub and had some really famous um, jazz singers throughout its time and performers, um, and it became the, the hot spot in Milwaukee. The hotel is still in ownership of the Marcus family today. The current um, CEO and like owner of the company is Greg Marcus. I believe that's Ben's grandson. I think. Greg also, um, the Marcus company also uh, owns movie theaters. That's how I knew Greg Marcus. I've been to Marcus theaters before and I was like, oh, I recognized the last name. I went, could it be? And then it was Greg. <laughs> and Greg is iconic. If I believe Marcus theaters go across the Midwest and uh, I'm not sure exactly how many states Marcus theaters are in. Greg is awesome. And uh, before every movie, he does like a little message and they're always, you know, kind of stupid and cringy, but they're, they're hilarious and I love them. So when I found out he owned this hotel, I was like, nice. However, it's quite expensive to stay at this hotel. It's like ranges from like 180 to, to plus a night, depending on like how long you plan to stay, um, what room you choose, etc., etc. So, a little expensive for my taste, but um, Greg Marcus owns it, so it's probably pretty cool. <laughs> Many famous people have stayed at this hotel, including Elvis, just four months before he died. William Howard Taft, Sarah Bernhard, Paul Newman, and many more. It is very popular with uh, baseball players, whether it be for the team of Wisconsin or the ones against. Um, it's very popular with them. We're not here to just talk about the hotel, we're here to talk about its history of being haunted. Now, there have been stories of it being haunted since its creation back in 1893. Charles Milwaukee Seaver, known at the time as the first white boy born in Milwaukee. I don't know how accurate that is, but I mean, what a title. <laughs> there was an article published May 5th, 1893, published into the Milwaukee Daily Sentinel that quoted Seaver. He talked about a time when where the Fister was located was just dirt, that he lived on a log cabin on the land and that there was a private burial ground on that piece of land. He went there kind of seeing if he could find any bodies and he didn't find any. Most likely if there was a burial ground, I hope they moved them. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they like to just build right on top. But if this hotel is, you know, built on top of a graveyard, that never bodes well for any building. There is a long list of baseball players specifically who have experienced um, ghostly encounters at the hotel. Adrian Beltry, who was a uh, player for the LS Dodgers, um, he talked to Sports Illustrated saying that when he stayed there, he heard knocking on the hallway and on his door when he went to investigate. There was nothing. Technology was like turning on and off and glitching and, you know, malfunctioning. Um, while he was trying to sleep, he heard knocking behind his headboard, which is creepy. And uh, he got so bad that he went to bed with a baseball bat every night, and he got very little sleep the three days he was there. Bryce Harper, Washington Nationals outfielder, stayed at the hotel in 2012, and he had a very um, spooky experience when he stayed there. Um, he laid out his clothes on a table near his bed and went to sleep. When he woke up, his clothes were on the floor and the table was across the room. Not where it was when he went to sleep. He checked the door to see if maybe someone had come in and moved it. The door was still locked from the inside. So, that table be scooting around. How he didn't wake up? I don't know if there was carpet or not, but that's a little creepy. Brewers outfielder Carlos Gomez stayed at the hotel, and when he did, his iPod malfunctioned. It was sitting on a table, he was nowhere near it, and it turned on by itself, started to play some music, and was like vibrating across the table. So he went over, turned it off, backed away, and it turned itself back on. I would probably be my bands. <laughs> Just like, ah! 
Start throwing holy water at my iPod. Like, not today, Satan. Cardinals shortstop Brendan Ryan stayed at the hotel and he said his experience was a little different. He said he saw like a bright light travel across the room um, instead of like full body apparitions or things moving. It was like a moving light and it made the room like colder. It was more like a moving light that kind of passed through the room. It was very strange. The room got a little bit chillier. Strange things. Strange things. In 2018, Carlos Martinez, the Cardinals pitcher, woke up in the middle of the night and got so scared that he actually went to another player's room because he had seen a full torsoed um, apparition in his room and it scared him. Another player on the team saw the same. The two and some of the other people on the team went and stayed with the coach in his room and he actually went on Instagram and did like a little video talking about it. We are here in Milwaukee. I just saw a ghost in Ozuna's room. He saw another. We are all here. We are all in Panita's room. We are all stuck here. We are going to sleep together. If the ghost shows again, we are all going to fight together. Now, I don't know what his plan was um, to fight a ghost. I mean, Sh Shane Madej did it, so it's possible. <laughs> the next day, I believe the team lost, and he blamed the ghosts, saying it was their fault they lost, which I guess if the ghosts are causing, like, Wisconsin teams to win, then um, not so terrible, are they? <laughs> it's not just baseball players who are experiencing ghostly activity. Actor Joy Lawrence claimed that during his stay in 2006, he was awoke by his daughter's toys turning themselves on, making noise, lighting up, just by themselves. The rapper and singer Megan The Stallion also stayed at the hotel in 2021. She did a little bit of like a ghost hunt while she was there. And uh, if you believe her, she had her own ghostly experience. She was staying there before Summerfest as she was performing it. And, um, ghosts. One of the main ghosts that are thought to roam the halls of the Fister Hotel is Charles Fister himself. He was a big part of creating this hotel with his father and then he ran it until he had his stroke in 1927. So a lot of people believe they see him roaming the halls and standing at the top of the staircase and watching over the hotel, you know, protecting it in a way like a guardian angel. Good-natured, portly gent standing on the hotel's grand staircase, observing the lobby, watching the living go about their business at a hand. Common things reported are disembodied voices, knocking, footsteps, uh, window blinds opening and closing, doors opening and closing, technology going haywire, whether it's turning itself on and off or just malfunctioning in some way, things moving, and of course you have full-body apparitions scaring the shit out of you. Now, whether any of this is true, I mean, it depends if you believe in ghosts. Obviously, many people have experienced ghosts in this hotel, whether it be a baseball player, an actor, or just your average Joe hanging out at this hotel for the night. No one has ever um, said these ghosts are violent. Most of them, it's kind of like they're curious. They're running around your room. They're knocking. They're trying to get your attention. But none of them have ever been physically hurt by a ghost, as far as I could find. Ghosts make things interesting. This hotel has been around since 1893. It's a very old hotel, so you're gonna have ghosts. Whether it's built on a, you know, a graveyard or not, there, it, there's gonna be ghosts uh, in one way or another. Um, I hope to one day maybe stay at this hotel, specifically the historic part of the building, just to like see it in person and be like, dang, this is sick. And if I ever do decide to stay at the hotel, maybe I'll make a video where I ghost hunt. Just like see if there's ghosties. Ooh. <laughs> Alright guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I enjoyed talking about like haunted buildings in Wisconsin. I did a video quite a while ago about a bar in Milwaukee. There's actually a lot of haunted buildings in Milwaukee. I don't know if, I mean Milwaukee is not, um, it's got a lot of crime there. So it being covered with ghosts is not really a shock to me. Um, but I noticed that a lot of like famous haunted buildings in Wisconsin are around or in Milwaukee. So they got, they got a ghost problem down there and they should really figure that out. We gotta get some Ghostbusters in here and start figuring this out. <laughs> but I got, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I'll be back again next week with another one. All right, I'll see you later.